The Seventh-day Adventist Church was founded in America in the mid-1800s. The first Adventists were known as Millerites, named after William Miller, the leader of their movement. William Miller was a sometime agnostic and deist, and in his own sort of spiritual journey, uh, came to discover that he needed to get engaged with the God of Scripture, and so started reading the Bible, beginning in Genesis, verse by verse, and in that process became very persuaded that much of Orthodox Christianity of his time frame had neglected an understanding of the soon return of Jesus Christ. According to Miller, Jesus would return October 22, 1844. By the time 1844 comes around in the calendar, the estimates run that as much as 500,000 persons, roughly 3% of the American population at the time, are in some sense following or attracted to or participating in this movement. When Jesus failed to appear, that day became known as the Great Disappointment. What impresses me about those people is that they didn't quit. They went back, studied scripture, and decided that regardless of whether he had come when they thought he ought to come or not, they were gonna trust to God to guide their lives. Among those early Millerites was a young woman named Ellen Harmon. She's raised a Methodist and talks about going to hear Miller preach as a teenage girl and was enormously impressed with both the clarity of the biblical message and the thought that Christ was literally coming to the earth again soon, if not 1843, then soon. Despite Christ's failure to return, she continued to believe. Because of injuries she had sustained as a child, she was confined to home. And she said sometimes she was so overwhelmingly lonely that she sought for some comfort. And so she started to read the Bible and she says in the scriptures she found Jesus as her friend who was always there for her. By 1846 she married and became Ellen White. Along the way, they went from being called Millerites to be called Adventists to denote those who were expecting the literal second advent of Jesus Christ. Ellen's husband James was an Adventist preacher and together they published a religious journal and word began to spread. The magazine propels those discussions in the 1850s about the Sabbath, about what Christ is doing in the heavenly sanctuary, about what happens to people when they die. They also have some very passionate views about what's happening in their society at the time. Ellen White discovered she had a gift for prophecy. In the 1860s, she received some of her most important visions. She received what she called a vision from God saying, if you're gonna to go to heaven, if you're gonna really live as one of my followers, you need to be healthy. She believed the mind, body, and spirit were interconnected. The, the sense in which God's plan for human beings being not just the cultivation of our minds or our spirits, but we're one whole unit. We, what happens to us anywhere in our body affects our spiritual life, affects, affects our intellectual life. She stopped eating meat and adopted a plant-based diet. It wasn't easy at first. She started eating granola crackers, and then after about three weeks of this, she said, I can't do this. These things taste like cardboard, like eating wood chips. <laughs> But she did start to feel better, exercise, eating vegetarian, and abstaining from tobacco and alcohol became tenets of the faith. In the late 1800s, White established an Adventist health and wellness resort in Michigan and called it Battle Creek Sanitarium. John Harvey Kellogg was the institution's director. He and his brother course, invented uh, Kellogg's cornflakes. But one of the things they really committed themselves to was hydrotherapy, time away, quiet, using water, good food, and you could be healthy. And especially that's in a time when the industrial society was anything but healthy. 
Kellogg's Battle Creek Sanitarium was seeing the major movers and shakers of Victorian society show up. J.C. Penney, Kresge, William Howard Taft is the 100,000th visitor uh, to the sanitarium, and Kellogg personally does the checkup of the U.S. president. Kellogg would part ways with the church, but not before introducing the benefits of holistic living and nutrition to the greater society. Ellen White went on to create a new medical school for the church in a small hill town in California known as Loma Linda. Today, Loma Linda is home to one of the many medical universities and hospitals the Adventist community has become known for. The city also has the highest concentration of Adventists in the country. Studies show that people here live longer than average. Research suggests that regular exercise, healthy eating, and a strong community contributes to their longevity. Unlike other Christian denominations, Seventh-day Adventists celebrate the Sabbath on Saturday. We believe that Sabbath begins at sunset on what we know as Friday, the sixth day, and ends at sunset on Saturday. When sunset comes around, different families have their different rituals or traditions, but we all stop. The notion of refraining from work, from trying to get ahead, from pushing business, God is trying to encourage us to take a day for reflection, for family, for rejuvenation. Saturday Sabbath usually consists of worship and a walk in nature, or charity work. Adventists share a strong commitment to serving their fellow man. One of their most popular supporting ministries is Maranatha Volunteers International. Maranatha Volunteers International builds schools and churches where people cannot do it for themselves. We're a construction company that has no money, does everything with donations, and our builders are volunteers. We're building a church for a congregation that has 25 or 30 members, who at one point had 150, but they all left because they don't like worshiping under a tree. We have a community service in practically every part of the world. That's another thing where we just go out and minister to. We serve the, the community in ways that they need. Mission, mission is our reason for, for being. I want in my Seventh-day Adventist community for every single member to be transformed by the indwelling Jesus that makes me kinder, compassionate, genuinely interested in the needs of others, ready to respond whenever the Spirit says, turn left and go see what he's got planned for me.